covariance example. So now we know that we can find the relationship between two random variables by calculating the covariance. So let's do an example to practice this. So let's revisit the portfolio X where we had three states in the world. We know which probability each gonna occur and we know the outcome. The only difference now is that I'm gonna add another portfolio Y which gonna have a different return. So the portfolio Y is going to have a negative return in the first state. We're going to have a 13% return in the second state. And it's going to lose 8% if the third state occur. We already know that the expected value of the X portfolio is 8% annually. And I also calculated the expected value of the second portfolio, which is going to be 3%. If you have not practiced the expectation calculations, I would strongly recommend that you pause the video right now and then just calculate the expected value of the Y portfolio. Practice is very important when it comes to statistics. Yes, you can understand it, but you really need to sit down and practice. So take this opportunity, pause the video, calculate the expected value of Y. All right, hopefully you have found it. So let's now calculate the covariance between these two random variables. So what we want to find is the covariance between asset X and asset Y. So we're going to use a simplified form. So we want to find the expected value of X times Y minus the expected value of X times the expected value of Y. And and these two we already know. So this was 0 0.08 and this was 0 0.03. So this is what we need to find. And to find the expectation of the cross product, we just use the same approach that we have always been doing when we use the expectation operator. We sum over all possible states of the world. We take the probability to end up in each state times the outcome in each state. But in this case, we have the outcome of X and Y. So that means that we have the outcome of X times the outcome of Y. So that means the first possible outcome, we're going to end up in one fourth of the time. And there we have that the X is 0 0.69 times the negative 0 0.06 of the Y variable. We need to add the second outcome, which is going to happen one half of the time where the first asset is going to return 3% and the second asset is going to return 13%. And then we just need to add the final outcome, which is going to happen one fourth of the time, where the first asset is going to lose 43% and the second asset is going to lose 8%. And we put this into our calculator and we're going to get that this expected cross product is 0.0002. So that means that this cross product is slightly positive. Finally, we just need to put all of this into the covariance expression. So that means that the covariance is 0 0.0002 minus 0 0.08 times 0 0.03. And if we put this into our calculator, we're going to get that the covariance is minus 0 0.0. 0.0022. All right, so now we know that there is a negative relationship between the random variable x and y. And slight side note here, if we're doing finance or optimal portfolio theory, this is the holy grail you're looking for. You want to find two assets with positive expected return that have a negative relationship. Because then you know that a combination of these two assets is going to improve the overall performance of your portfolio. So hopefully you now feel comfortable with calculating the covariance. You could also do this with this previous sample. It's just that you need to pull the same values for the Y variable and then do the sample estimate of it also. But the idea is the same. One issue though with covariance is that it's going to be scale dependent. Meaning that if you measure the variable in kilograms or pounds, the covariance is going to change. And this is a bit problematic, especially if you want to compare the relationship between different variables, because then you cannot compare the covariance numbers directly. Then we should be using the correlation, which we're going to do next.